In this video, we're going to take a look at how vertical displacement and phase shift affect sinusoidal functions. And then we're going to combine all the transformations of amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical displacement and see how they affect the sine and cosine curves as well. All right, so to begin, let's take a look at what C and D do. Now, if you observe, the C is right beside the theta, it's within the brackets, but it's after the sine and the cosine. So the C translates the graph horizontally. The D, if you observe, is outside the brackets and it's at the very back and D translates the graph vertically. So in trigonometry, we call the vertical shift a vertical displacement. So let's graph the following, and I want you to tell me what the vertical displacement and domain and range are. So in this first example, now like I've said before, I want you to always keep in the back of your mind what the basic sine graph looks like. So we're going to draw this. It goes from max of 1 to negative 1. We have 0, pi, and 2 pi, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So what's happened here is that we have this plus one and is not inside the brackets and is at the very back. So we say that there is a vertical displacement of one. So therefore, this means that this whole graph has now shifted up by one. So instead of at zero, we're now going to graph it starting at one. Now, what I usually do is when I see that there's a vertical displacement, I draw that central axis to help me and guide me where the rest of the points will go. So I'm going to draw this vertical or central axis at 1 because the vertical displacement was 1. So I'm going to graph the first point at 0, 1. I'm going to graph the last point at 2 pi, which I'll put here, and then also at 1. Okay, then I can label my other theta values by scaling. So we graph the middle point at pi and at 1 because remember all these three points are all in the central axis. <coughs> Excuse me. Now since there is no amplitude, we haven't introduced that here, we're going to have an amplitude of 1 from the central axis. So this will be up at the top and then at 3 pi over 2 it is now here at zero. So therefore, we know that the whole graph has shifted up by one, and that's why now the top value is now at two, and then the minimum value is now at zero. So we're gonna connect our five points in a nice curve, and this does keep going on. I've only drawn a part of it. So we say that the domain is all real numbers, and then the range, however, is not from negative one to one, but from 0 to 2, since it's now shifted up by 1. All right, so you can try the other one on your own. Now let's take a look at phase shift. So phase shift in trigonometry is what we call a horizontal translation. So phase shift is kind of just the fancy name um, in trigonometry. And it is the translation of the graph um, of this periodic function. So let's take a look at an example. And again, I have um, sine. <coughs> and we're going to graph the following. And I want you to tell me the phase shift, domain, and the range. So we notice that inside the brackets, it's theta minus pi over 2. So we now know that this is pi over 2. And to help us a little bit more, because it's minus, we know that this is shifted to the right. So again, keeping in the back of our mind, what the sine graph looks like. I'm now going to shift this whole graph, this basic sine graph, pi over 2 units to the right. So if you think about it, this would look something like this. So we're now going to start at pi over 2. All right, so let's label everything. So we have 1, negative 1, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2. 
So we start at five pi. Sorry, we start at pi over two because it's shifted over, and then we know that the period is two pi so because everything's shifted. So two pi away from pi over two is going to be five pi over two, and then from there we can keep halving everything. So halfway would be this point here, and then we're going to draw this top point at pi and one, and then we're going to draw this low point now the minimum at 2 pi and negative 1. And again, we can now connect all our points. Now this does again keep going to the left and to the right. So again, the domain is all real numbers. So the phase shift actually doesn't affect a cosine or a sine curve because it is always going to be all real numbers. And the range here, we haven't moved it up or down. So our range is going to be from negative 1 to one. All right, so let's combine everything together. So when we have all our amplitude, period, phase shift, and vertical displacement all together, these this is what the functions will look like. So A is at the very front, in front of the trig function. So A determines the amplitude. So if A is positive, we don't have to do anything. But remember, if A is negative, we must reflect over the theta axis or our x-axis. B, notice B is inside the brackets here, okay, so this whole piece here is what affects our theta and B determines the period and remember the period is normally 2 pi but we're going to now divide it by whatever the value of B is. If B is positive, again we do nothing, but if B is negative we're going to reflect over the y-axis. All right, C is also inside the brackets here, and C, which we just noticed, determines the phase shift. If C is a positive value, we're going to shift to the right, and if C is negative, making this to become a plus sign, we're going to shift to the left. And finally we have D. Notice that D is not in the brackets and it's at the very end outside it's not connected to sine it's added or subtracted at the end and D determines our vertical displacement if D is positive we're going to shift up and if D is negative we're going to shift down now before we find the phase shift uh, we need to make sure there's no coefficient directly in front of theta if there is, we need to factor it out first. So let me show you an example where this will happen. So if you take a look here, we have 5 sine, and then in the brackets we have 2 theta plus 6. <coughs> now it looks like our period, or the B value, is 2, which it is. But it looks like our phase shift is 6, but actually it is not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as y equals 5 sine. And then I'm going to write bigger brackets. I'm going to factor out the 2. I'll put another bracket and then put theta plus 3. Close this bracket and close this bracket. Now we only factor from here, not the 7, because the 7 is not inside the brackets. So the 7 we still have on the outside. So if I wanted to identify all of these um, values, or trans uh, sorry, our transformations, we have amplitude, which is 5. Our period, remember our period is always going to be 2 pi divided by whatever our b value is. So in this case, 2. So 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. Our phase shift is plus 3. So we're actually going to move negative 3, meaning we're going to move to the left. So we can say or 3 left. Our vertical displacement is going to be 7. And that will be 7 up. And then our domain, like always, is always real, real numbers. Now our range is going to be a little different, so you have to think about this. So we have moved up a vertical displacement of 7, so our central axis would now be at 7, but our amplitude is 5, so that means we're going to add 5 to get to our top line, which is now 12, but we need to subtract 5 to get to our bottom line, which is 2. So, 
2 to 12 is now what our range is. So we write this as 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 12. Now we're going to combine all of this to graph. So we're going to use transformations or we're going to use key points. I actually like to use key points. If you use transformations, uh, make sure that you apply the horizontal and the vertical stretches first and then you apply the translations. So I'm going to show you how to uh, use the method of using key points. And let's take a look at by doing an example here. So we're going to do a coast example. And we're going to sketch this over two cycles. So <coughs> let's identify um, all of these features. So we have the amplitude, which is 2. Uh, we have our period, which is 2 pi divided by a third. So that's going to be actually 6 pi. Okay, then we have our phase shift, and we can see it's plus pi over 2. So it's going to be negative pi over 2. Vertical displacement is 1. And again, we know that the domain is all real numbers. And the range, actually, I'll do the range for looking at the graph after. Okay, so how do we start? So when we start by graphing key points, we always start first with our phase shift. Okay. So in the back of your mind, I want you to keep an idea of what cosine looks like. Now, this is what cosine looks like normally, but because of this negative sign, I'm actually going to redraw this so that I understand that, and keep in the back of my mind, that cosine is actually negative. So it's gonna look like this. So this will end at two pi. This is zero, pi, and we have negative 1 to 1, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. All right, <coughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our phase shift, and we're going to move this backwards by negative pi over 2. Actually, you know what? Sorry, we're not going to start with our phase shift. We're actually going to start with our amplitude and our vertical displacement. So we know that the whole graph has moved up by 1. So I'm now going to draw a central line here show me that that's my central axis or sometimes we call it a midline okay and this is just a guide so that this represents this theta axis here all right so my amplitude is two so i know that my highest point will actually be up here so i'm going to kind of just draw a dotted line to show me where that is and i'm going to draw a dotted line on the bottom to show me the lowest point the minimum it will go all right <coughs> so we used our vertical displacement and we've used our amplitude. All right, so now we're going to use our phase shift, step three, and we're going to go backwards by negative pi over two. Now I haven't plotted any values, so we don't really know what they are. So I'm actually just going to make every line pi over two. So this will be pi, two pi, three pi, and so on. So I've labeled all the values on the theta axis, and I'm going to plot my first point, negative pi over 2. And notice that first point is down on the bottom here. So I'm going to plot that point right here. Now, because of the phase shift, I, my first point is at negative pi over 2. So what's going to happen is that my last point is going to be 6 pi away. So I'm going to add 6 pi to my first point, and that gives me 5 and a half pi. So therefore I'm going to graph my very last point here at five and a half. So five and a half pi is here's five, so here's five and a half. Okay, then I know that from here to here I'm going to count spaces and I can see that this is 12 spaces. So I'm going to try to plot my middle point which is in the middle, so a half of 12 will now be six. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And that point is at the very top. It's my maximum. So I'm going to graph that at the very top there. And then I'm going to graph this middle point here. And again, that is halfway between the first point and the third point. Knowing that this is six spaces, I'm now going to graph one, two, three. Plot it on my central axis. One, two, three, which is my max. One, two, three, which is again on my middle axis. And then I can now connect my five points. And then by counting one, two, three continuously, I'm going to graph my next period. 
And there you have it.